I will ask, just want to check in with our quote reporter, see if you're ready to go. Ready to go. Thank you. Okay. Can you also give us video, please? Ms. O'Connor, thank you. I just need to position your camera a, bit, a little better so we can see your face. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we will call to order this meeting of the Illinois Board of Review for today, December 14th, 2021. I know that may be a series of requests for continuances, withdrawals, or otherwise to announce agreements. Um, before we get there, I just want to make one general announcement before we start. Two general announcements. One, the board will introduce itself to the whole group, um, and we will not do that for each uh, case because we all should be on now. Uh, the secondly, that if you, uh, this is directed to appellants, those individuals who are appealing the violations. If you are an LLC or otherwise organized as a corporation, you must be represented by legal counsel. So if you are representing yourself and you are not an attorney, uh, I would ask that you would try to speak with the lawyer for the city prior to your case being called. That would be helpful for you not to sit on because we can't hear your case if you are a corporate entity and are not represented by an attorney. So I just wanna make that general statement. Of course, you know, certain cases represent certain levels of complexity that we need to be sensitive to, but that's generally where we are. Uh, let me do this. I will, uh, the board will introduce itself, then I will call on the individuals from the law department to uh, announce uh, their uh, withdrawals or continuous requests, et cetera. Okay, again, I'm Kenneth Woodson, Chair of the Board of Review. Ralph Pincus, board member. Steve Pettit, board member. Ed Jefferson, counsel for the board. Michelle Ram, board's administration. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, let's see, we're gonna start with Mr. Christopher Johnson. Good morning, this is Christopher Johnson for the city of Philadelphia. Uh, I, I have one case that's listed for today. It's the appeal of C properties regarding the building at 1704 Frankfurt Avenue. Uh, I've been in touch with attorney Jared Klein, who represents C Properties for the purposes of today. Uh, this was a, a building that was a new construction built without a building permit. Uh, at this point in time, they have obtained uh, a permit. Um, and uh, we are going to ask for it to be rescheduled in 60 to 90 days for the purpose of the department would like to continue to perform the required inspections on the property to make sure that the permits have complied all the violations. And um, I think we were in agreement in asking the board to continue this one more time. Okay, in that instance, then uh, you're, it has been confirmed that they've required the necessary permits though. Is that correct, Mr. Johnson? Uh, they, they obtained a building permit, but I'm, yes. not, I'm not certain that they need, have every single permit that would be required. Again, C Properties purchased the property from an unscrupulous contractor that okay. had constructed this building with no permits whatsoever. Just because they got the permit doesn't mean all of the work that is inside sure. the building is up to code. But the department needs to go through and inspect the property according to the terms of the permit in order to uh, verify. Understood. Okay, we'll continue this case then. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Uh, Ms. Maggie White. Uh, good afternoon. I'm here on number nine and 10, uh, it, the city, it's Speedway LLC. Yes. Um, the attorney for Speedway had requested a continuance and we had certain issues with that continuance and had asked that, um, you know, had, had 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 conversations with him. He is undergoing uh, medical treatment for a serious medical issue. So, so we agreed that if, it, if the board would approve it, that we would agree to the continuance on the grounds that it, it be listed in January as early as possible and marked no further continuances. Um, now, who is the attorney of record in this matter for the appellate? So the attorney, there were multiple attorneys, but, but the attorney handling it is Michael Drugan because uh, the original attorney has left that firm that was originally handling it. And he is the one that is now uh, has this, this serious medical issue. That is why he is not here today. I did discuss this at length with him yesterday. 
he is not in a condition to appear before this board. I, I can attest to that. Okay. The issue that the city has is that we had agreed to a stay in this previously, which has allowed them, this is a, a tobacco case, to continue to sell tobacco. And there's been multiple continuances, so we didn't want a further continuance. This is a very unique situation given the state of the attorney's health and the inability for someone in his firm to, to sub in for him at such late notice. So we understand that. Um, but at the same time, you know, we're very uncomfortable with the, you know, an, us agreeing to this continuance, which is why we had represented to him and then he emailed you know, to the board uh, request saying, you know, as long as it was, as long as it is in January with no more continuances, you know, we, the city would be amenable to that. What about this issue of uh, complying with the no sale of tobacco? Can that be enforced prior to the hearing? So we had originally agreed to a stay. And if, and if it's list, if it is listed in January, we, we will continue to abide by that agreement. But if if it's, you know, past that, I mean, I'm not sure what's gonna happen. I think there'll be have to be court action. Okay, and this firm, Mr. Dugan's firm is such that there's no one else available to, who's qualified to take this on. So he had an associate that was, that had at some point been a little bit involved, but she is actually uh, covering a trial that he also you know, okay. today, I, I mean, it's a very unfortunate situation. And that's why I am here, you know, attesting to the condition that I, I saw him in yesterday. Um, it was a, a recent serious diagnosis that required immediate start to treatment. So, okay. Well, uh, as you can hear from the tenor of my questions, uh, the board is not, uh, we're having problems <laughs> with the continuance in this matter. And so, unless I hear objection from one of my colleagues, it, it must be, it should be marked, has to be marked, must be heard in the future. Yes. Uh, the, this is the absolute final continuance uh, for this matter. And also I would encourage the law department to reconsider the stay on enforcement. I, I did, Chair, I did make clear to him that, that there was no further continuance and that if, if you know, his client need to, needed to find a different lawyer, that's what they needed to do. So they do understand that. Okay, and if that lawyer shows up the day of and says, I need to figure out how to work on this, too late. Yeah, no, that, that's it, we're done. Okay, all right, thank you very much. We'll continue, it, mark those two matters. And actually, Ms. White, would you read the uh, code, the appeal numbers in so they can be recorded properly, please? Yeah, would it be possible if we could get that January date today or is that? I don't think that's possible given the tenor of other things that you got a lot of moving pieces at the moment. Okay. And so we won't be able to do that today, I don't believe. Ms. Rand, is that possible? Um, I don't think so. I mean, if you wanted a definite date, I could say our first date in February, if that's amenable, if you're amenable to that. If you want January, I have to check that out and get back to you. I, I, w I would like January. I mean, that would be our, our preference. So if, if you need to get back on the specific January date, then, then that's totally acceptable to us. Okay. Um, Thank you okay. so much, Ms. Rand. I appreciate it. All right. Ms. White, would you read those in, please? Uh, the first listed as number nine is HA 20210024382438. Okay. And that should be listed as continued. As, yes, continued, no more continuances. Yes, yeah, continued, uh, continued, must be heard. And then the second is number 10, appeal number HA 2021. Zero zero two four three nine. Continued must be heard. Thank you. Thank you. And um, that concludes my business with the board today. Okay. Thank you very much. Let's see here. Uh, Mr. Leonard Router, you have uh, anything for us today? Uh, you're muted. Uh, yes. yeah. 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 Thanks. Um, I am here on a, a few matters. Uh, the first one. Uh, I believe we are jointly requesting a continuance um, in calendar, I'm sorry, appeal number 38889, I believe. Having a little trouble reading it. Um, and that's Norwalk Lots LLC, 1226 Norwalk Road. I do understand that this had been continued previously. Um, however, uh, there's 
a, a new inspector on the case uh, and also new attorney being me, I don't have prior um, knowledge of the history of the case. I mean, I've read into it and I know what, what's going on, but we are jointly requesting a continuance because I believe Mr. Miller, who is here representing the property owner, um, I believe he and I will be able to at least work out um, what needs to be done at the property. Mr. Miller, is Mr. Miller present? Yes. Yes, yes. good afternoon. Uh, Mr. Miller, what is your sense of things in this matter? Uh, I, I join in the request. Okay. Uh, are we at a point of resolution or are we going to have to have a full hearing on this? I'm, I'm hoping that we'll be able to resolve it uh, without the necessity of a hearing. How many times has the case been continued? I know it's not the, this is not the first continuance. That's right. I believe it was only continued once before. Um, uh, but this request is is at the city's uh, this is at the city's request. I believe the first time was at the uh, property owner's request. Okay. All righty. Uh, thank you. Uh, so we'll can note that as being continued. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. Thank you. Good afternoon. Thank you. Uh, I have another case, uh, twenty one forty one St James Street. Uh, I had reached out to the uh, attorney representing the appellant. Uh, seeing if we could resolve it. Um, I do not see them he here. His name's Justin Crick. I don't see Justin here. Um, he may have actually just assumed uh, that what I was asking for uh, would was agreed to. Um, but I guess we'll wait until it's called. Yeah, let's do that. Given the nature of it, it, it seemed to be whether you have, a, whether the work was done in accordance with an approved permit or not. <laughs> Right, that was the issue, um, and uh, again, I'd made a suggestion. The case has been lingering for a while, okay. so I just made a suggestion to him about how to resolve it, and I have not heard back yet. Okay. Uh, the the other, I'm sorry, and that was uh, appeal number three seven zero four five. Have another case uh, three eight two nine nine, uh, sixteen twenty seven Rittner Street. I yes, had, I had previously been advised. Um, that uh, Mr. Mulvihill for the uh, appellant was going to withdraw the appeal, but I don't, I didn't hear further from that. I don't know if that happened and I do not see Mr. Mulvihill here today. Uh, is the appellant present, Kelly, Peters, Kelly Peterson? Is that individual on the call today? I don't see her. Okay, let's wait until we call it in rotation sure. and see what happens. All right, thank okay, you. But I would ask those, the board, I guess, did not actually receive uh, withdrawal. I don't believe we have. And okay. I'll ask Ms. Rand to do some research while we're uh, hearing from others. Sure. Thank you. Uh, I also have one of the, I see now that there's two cases involving 1642 Olive Street. Uh, that is a water department case. Yes. But I did, it did look like there was also a separate case that was being listed uh, for a code violation. Yes, there's one water and one code violation. And I'm not sure who's representing that matter for, from the city. Good afternoon, um, Chairperson Woodson. I'm Alexandra Athanasiadis, and I'm representing the city on that matter. Um, okay, just for a moment, I'm having difficulty. I don't, yes, now I see you, my apologies. Okay, continue. Um, and actually, um, I had done some research and I, I spoken to Ms. Klein from the uh, law department there is no water violation. Both these notices, I believe, um, have to do with the property maintenance. Oh, well, it it involves a water issue. It involves a uh, a, a failure of uh, an underground sewage pipe that uh, that runs beneath. If this case has been in, was in court for a while um, and it was supposed to have been resolved, I don't know. I assume that uh, newer violations had been written since the court case ended, uh, but they appear to involve the same exact issue, which is a uh, drainage pipe uh, that was backing up in the appellant's property. Uh, I'm, I'm just making a representation that, you know, I guess I can offer proof what this is about as far as I know. Well, that how there about was this? A, before but, we do that, though, just before we do that, I just, uh, Alexandra, yes. forgive me for using your first name just no. for the moment. Uh, you're representing the city, correct? Correct. 
And so are you going to be arguing this case today or is there some other kind of arrangements that's been made? Is it being asked for continuance or withdrawal? Where, where, where are you with it? Well, I was not going to be making argument um, and speaking to Ms. Klein, it was my understanding because the water department didn't issue any notices. The notices came from LNI and the issue with the pipes had to do with it being inside the house. So that's why um, it was my understanding and it was expressed to me that that issue was going to be that's part of LNI. That's not water. We never okay. issued an actual notice. Well, let's, let's do this for us, for the board. Okay. If you and Mr. Rauder could have a conversation sure. offline to determine how you want to approach this. Okay. Um, and also, I guess, as of right now, I do not see uh, the appellant or at least the person that had previously been his attorney. So maybe, again, we can just wait and see what happens when it's called. Yeah, we could. It's just that it, it appears, though, that the law department has of uh, uh, differing p positions on this matter. So it'd be helpful, I think, the two of you spoke. Just so uh, I, I, I mean, I, I have no reason to doubt what uh, Ms. Athanasia Athanasiadis is uh, is saying about the case. I, I have nothing to do with the. He, I, my guess is that the appellant uh, said it involved water, and it somehow just got assigned as a PWD case. I, I have no reason to doubt. Okay. I don't think we're, there's any dispute here. I mean, okay, uh, okay, all right. So let's uh, we'll hear it when it gets called. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Uh, okay, Miss Curley. Yes, good afternoon, board. Um, Caroline Curley for the city. I'm here on appeal. It's 2021 um, at the property 1526 South 22nd Street. Okay. My understanding is that this appeal has been withdrawn. Okay, we, re we uh, reviewed that in the executive session, so it's noted as being withdrawn. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. And Man, then I am, uh, I'm sorry, I'm Mr. also. Lally, the attorney passed away. Okay, who's speaking? My name is Stanley Sinowitz. The attorney was Douglas Lolly. He passed away. The matter has been withdrawn. So may I please okay. be excused? Yes, sir. You may be excused. Thank you. Ms. Curley, do you have something, uh, some yes, additional have, information? Just one additional. I'm also here on the appeal for 2021-2600 um, Walnut Deli Grocery. Um, and Ms. Rand did communicate with our office indicating that the um, appellant was requesting a continuance. He is in need of a Spanish interpreter. And as he is a corporate entity, he is still seeking an attorney. Okay. Um, so the department has, the city has no objection. This is his first request for Okay. So this is appeal number HA 2021-002600, Dario A. Aguilar Pina. Uh, 82 East Walnut Lane, noted as continued. Thank you. Thank you, and that concludes my business today. Thank you. And so uh, I believe that represents, is there anyone else in the law department that I have not called upon? Yes, Nikia Clark on behalf of the city of Philadelphia. Yes. I'm uh, here for a health appeal ending in 2604. It's okay. 700 South 55th Street. It was previously continued from the 11-16 date. Okay. I'm not sure if I see the appellant here today. It's Daylin Grocery Store. Okay, but you're prepared to proceed when it's called? I am. Okay, thank you. We'll, we'll make that note. Thank you. Okay, anyone else? Yes, Chairperson Whitson. This is Alex again from the city. Yes, yes. I, I also have number eight on um, the list today. Uh, HA 2021-000-767. Okay. Uh, property address 3235 North Marston Street. We are ready to move forward with that matter. Okay. Okay. And, we'll do that. And um, also I have number 15 on the list. HA 2021-003616. Property address 1225 South Street. Um, the city would like to mark that matter moot. Oh, that's moot. Okay, thank you very much. Sure. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm, uh, I wasn't able to hear exactly what she said. Did she say marking the matter moot? Yes. And yourself, you are, sir. I, I, I'm Robert Braun, the appellant. Does that mean I'm excused, uh, yes. Chairman Woodson? Yes, it is. That's, it does means that the matter has been resolved. Thank you. God bless you all. I'm very thank impressed you. with the professionalism of how this is done. Oh, well, thank you, and have a good day. Okay. Thank you. For, thank you, everybody. Goodbye. Okay. Goodbye. Okay. Uh, 
Thank you. I think that resolves uh, our preliminary matters. I actually, um, Chairman, uh, I represent the city as well. Um, I have two. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see you there. Today. Your name, um, please. My name is Michelle Reinhardt. Okay. Um, the first matter is appeal number 39923. Okay. Um, this is property regarding uh, 1342 Narragansett Street. We would like to mark that moot as well. Perfect. Thank you very much. And then I also have a second appeal. Um, this is HA 2021-002608. Um, I do not see the appellant at this time, but the city is prepared to put on its case. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. So noted. Okay, mm -hmm. Mr. Vaccaro, uh, you're raising your hand. I can't hear you. Something. Yeah. Can you hear me? Barely. I'm going to call it. Okay. I'll call it. Okay. We just heard you. We just told you. If you hold that phone closer, we might be able to hear you. I, no. I would like to add that in the chat earlier in this session, Mr. Vaccaro um, wrote that he is representing uh, the appellant in this matter, Parmenio Almonte. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you. So he, he'll need to uh, resolve this audio issue before we call the case. And so uh, just make a note to, to uh, give Mr. McCarroll some time to get his audio worked out before we call this case. Okay. Absolutely. Right, we'll do that. Okay. Thank you. Sure. All righty. So let's go back up to the top then. And uh, if there's nothing else, we will uh, proceed. Uh, Ms. Rand, call the sure. first matter. Absolutely. Case number one, appeal number 37045, Ben Saba, 2141 St. James Street, represented by Justin Crick. Okay. Is Mr. Crick available? And I think, uh, Mr. Rotter, you're representing the city in this matter, correct? Uh, that's correct. Um, I think Again, just because it's possible there was a misunderstanding, uh, normally I would just simply ask that this be marked uh, city affirmed for failure to appear. Uh, I, I, Mr. Crick's uh, been a colleague. Uh, we've known each, uh, I've known him for a while. I think this probably was a misunderstanding. So rather than mark it uh, city affirmed failure to appear, I would ask that it be marked city affirmed 90 day stay of enforcement. Uh, six, sorry, 60 day stay of enforcement. Okay. Um, which is what I what I had uh, mentioned to him before. Now, the, the only issue, well, not the only, the issue though for the board is that we don't have anyone representing the appellant present. But, uh, and this, what's the nature of this case before we decide? Uh, this involves uh, construction that was done uh, in, uh, in the exterior of an historic property at 2141 St. James Place, which is an, it's, it's known as the English Village. Uh, in Center City, um, he removed uh, a portion of a wall, uh, not 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 part of the house, but like a fence wall that was attached to the house, and also did he did some other work uh, that was also not directly related to the historical commission. Uh, there was se several different violations, so all the, uh, he did a lot of work, none of which was um, had any permits. Uh, some work did have permits. But most of the work did not have permits, uh, especially the removal of the historic wall. We had continued it several times because he had said that he was going to um, submit a permit application to legalize the work before the Historical Commission, uh, but they withdrew that application uh, before the Historical Commission in the past uh, several, uh, over the past month. And that's when we reached out. I reached out to Justin Crick and you know letting him know that his client didn't go forward. Uh, with the uh, uh, with the application and, and that we would proceed today and I can forward these emails to the board um, okay but I'll just represent that uh, Mr. Crick indicated that he would probably be withdrawing the appeal uh, but he wanted to know about enforcement issues and essentially uh, I think we were going to agree that it be Mark City affirmed with the 60 day stay of enforcement um, so again okay. I mean since they're not here you could just simply mark it city affirmed failure to appear uh, so, I mean, I think we're being actually more generous than what would normally happen, but I'm only okay. doing that because uh, that was the last thing I said to Justin. 
Sure. I, I just want to uh, affirm that, in fact, the appropriate service was made to the appellant and or the attorney representing the appellant. Uh, Ms. Rand, can you confirm that? I'm just going to take a second to check, please. OK. Again, and again, uh, Justin was Mr. Crick that sorry, Mr. Crick was uh, was aware of today's hearing. We okay. were specifically talking about it. So, OK. And, and uh, Mr. Rowdy, you're you're representing today. There was nothing said in your communication, either written or oral, that would suggest mm -hmm. that today's uh, mm -hmm. matter would not be heard. That's that's correct. Yes. I, okay. I, I mean, I actually the only thing to that effect was that uh, he was they were contemplating just simply withdrawing the appeal. Okay. Um, but again, they didn't do that. But again, I made an offer, and I think Mr. Crick may have misunderstood and, and is not appearing as a result of that. Okay. Well, I, I, uh, Ms. Rand? Yes, I'd like to say that notices were sent out on November 10th, 2020. Okay, thank you. I think the appropriate decision for us to make today, uh, Ms. Rotter, notwithstanding your representations, uh, given that they aren't present and there's no one here representing the appellant, either himself or his attorney, that uh, we should just mark it as not uh, non-appearance. And so I'd ask Mr. Pincus to give me a time and we will then poll the board. It's uh, 1.49 p.m. 1.49 p.m. Uh, with regard to Appeal number 37045, uh, 2141 St. James Street, exterior side. Uh, we will poll the board. City affirm lack of appearance. City affirm non appearance. City affirm non appearance. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Ryder. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, what do we have next? Mm -hmm. Case number two, appeal number 38299. Kelly Peterson, 27 Rittner Street, represented by Leo Mulvihill. Okay, uh, Ms. Rotter, are you handling that one as well? Uh, I am. Uh, okay. Leonard F. Reuter for the city of Philadelphia. Um, again, uh, we had been told that the appeal would be withdrawn, but I believe Ms. Rand has not found the withdrawal request, so we would simply just ask the board mark this city affirmed failure to appear. Okay, thank you. I uh, just want to check for the record. Is Mr. Leo M. Mulvihill present today? Or anyone else representing the interests of Kelly Peterson, uh, 1627 Rittner Street? Okay, thank you. Uh, well, uh, Ms. Uh, Ms. Uh, Rand, can you confirm that uh, service was indeed uh, provided? Excuse me. Yes, yeah, service was made on November 10th, 2021. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. If Pinkus, I, would you mind giving us the time, please? Mr. Mr. Chairman, if I may, I just, yes, just sir. want to confirm, since Mr. Mulvihill is familiar, familiar to the board, Mr. Router, did you say you had spoken to him, or you did not speak? No, I actually, I, I have, I have my, spoken to Mr. Mulvihill, my uh, one of the other attorneys in the unit uh, who assigns the uh, the cases, the board cases, uh, had apparently had some discussion or had received word. But I mean, again, he's not here, so. Okay, fine. No, I, so there is some. There is clearly knowledge of the hearing scheduled for today. That's all I was trying to. Oh, yeah, he, he knew. Thank you. Thank you. OK, thank you very much. Mr. Pincus, would you give us a time? 1.51 p.m. 1.51 p.m. OK, with regard to appeal number 38299, Kelly Peterson, 1627 Rittner Street. Uh, we will poll the board. City affirm non-appearance. City affirm non-appearance. City affirm non-appearance. Thank you very much. Okay, let's move on to the next matter. Case number six, appeal number HA-2020-000778, Matthew Bartlett, 1642 Olive Street, and a second case, number HA-2021-000373, case number seven for Matthew Bartlett at the same address, 1642 Olive Street. Okay, thank you. Uh, Ms. Athenakis, Ath my apologies, I butchered your last name, so please. <laughs> Not a problem at all. Um, 
Mr. Woodson, um, I just received an email and I, be I believe Mr. Reuter was also copied on that, um, that the matters are moot complied. Both matters are moot complied? Yes. Yeah, okay. But, but well, that makes, I mean, based on the history of the case that I'm aware of, that would make the most sense because okay. this, this should, all, all of the issues involving this property were supposedly resolved at the end of 2019. So that's why we were all kind of surprised that this came back up. Okay. All right. So we'll mark it as uh, moot complied. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, and I believe that's both of the cases. Yes, both cases. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. All righty. What do we have next? Case number eight, appeal number HA-2021-000767, Stephanie Turner, 3235 North Marston Street. Okay. Who's representing the city in this matter? Uh, Chairperson Woodson, I am. Okay. And just for the record, would you just uh, announce your name again, please? Sure. Uh, this is Alexandra Athanasiadis representing the city of Philadelphia in this okay. matter. Thank you. Is Stephanie Turner a representative present? Uh, yes, I am. Oh, uh, you're Stephanie Turner? Yes, I am. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, Ms. Turner, uh, are you the sole owner of the property? Um, no, at the last hearing, um, I was... Um, Supposed to try to get on the deed, which I did fax some paperwork over to Miss Rand um, to show that I did that back September the 23rd and um, still waiting to find out whether I'm okay, on the deed. Okay, let's do this. Let, let okay. me swear you in first because I, I, uh, I don't want you to testify without having been sworn in. Uh, raise your right hand, please. Do you swear or affirm the testimony that you give today be the truth or help you got? Yes. Okay, now the question that I asked is I'll ask it in a different way. Okay. Are, are you now identified as one of the owners of the property on the official I really, record? I don't know. I'm just, I have the paperwork showing it was filed to put me on the deed, but I don't know if I'm on the deed yet. So you have not gotten a confirmed copy of the deed back in your possession? That's correct. Uh, Ms. Anthony Knox at this. See this? Alex is fine. Charlie. Alex? Yes. Well, that's, uh, forgive me for using your first name in these proceedings. Alex, yes. uh, do you have anything in the record regarding the ownership? No. And just by way of background, um, Mr. Woodson, this was last before the board on August 31st. And as um, she stated, Ms. Turner, um, there's a tangled title issue. She resides at the property, was my understanding. However, the property was owned by her father and he's deceased. And that's why it didn't move forward last time. It was for um, Ms. Turner to work out these issues um, regarding ownership of the property because she had been interested and she can correct me if I'm wrong in receiving a help loan to try to get the repairs made. But as she is not listed on the deed as the record property owner, she's unable to do so. So I have no record. I've received no documentation to indicate she is now, um, you know, record property owner. Okay, uh, ma'am. Uh, who else is on the pro who else is uh, uh, on the deed in addition to yourself? Um, well, this is well. My brother's attorney filed the paperwork, and his name is Derek Thompson. So it would be Derek Thompson and myself that's going to be added to the deed. He did give me the paperwork. No, no, you, um, you missed that. No, no, you, just uh, listen to me clearly. In sorry. addition to yourself, tell me the names of the other individuals who are will be on the deed and their relationship to you. There's your brother. Oh, okay, it would be dear Thompson, my brother. Anyone else? No. So no uh, surviving uh, descendants of other relatives? No, just me and, and him. Me and Can your brother come to the hearing? Are you talking about right now? No, no, not right now, but at a future date. Um, yes, I can ask him, but I know he's going to want to know because he feel like he did all the paperwork that was needed to be done to have us added. Well, deed. it hasn't happened yet. And so what, what I'm trying to do is suggest another way to get it done. If the paperwork okay. has not been done, if he is present and the two of you are present and okay. you can both represent that you are the sole heirs to the property, then that's one way to work this out. Do okay. you have a will from your father that sort of indicates that the property goes to the two of you? No. 
Okay. So have you uh, filed anything with the orphans court regarding uh, the assets of the will? Register of wills office. Excuse Register of wills office. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> uh, no, the only thing we um, that was filed, like I said, was um, was the record of deeds that was done by the attorney for me and him. That was it. Mr. Pincus, you have any other advice on this? Well, I was just trying to look and see, and I don't know whether Miss, uh, and I'm just going to say Alexandra, was able to look, and I don't have, I, I've got too many screens that I can't, I'm afraid to touch, and look on the city's website and look up the property and confirm, and she has access to Philodox to confirm whether the deed's been recorded. They may not have gotten it back, but it may be of record with the city. Okay, that's a good point. Is that possible, Alexander? Yes, give me one second. I can pull it right up. Okay, thank you. And I guess in, in another scenario, if the attorney is able to send a copy of whether he has a time stamp copy of the deed when right. it was filed, they may be able to provide that to us. Right. It, it probably would be acceptable if the attorney would do that in lieu of the brother coming. Possibly. It would, the brother comes plus that. I, I, they're both co-owners, so there yes. would be need to be some representation that the brother you know is in present or is authorizing her to proceed okay i'm almost okay i apologize this is no no apologies required this is sort of research on the fly here I know when I had checked as of last week, um, the deed had remained the same. So I'm just checking to see if there have been any updates okay. since. Well, can I ask a question? Sure. <clears throat> While she's checking. Yes, ma'am. I just wanted to know if Ms. Rand got the documents that I did send over. It was like four documents. Okay. Well, we'll she's checking if the record uh, as well. So we'll find out in a moment. Okay. Uh, Ma'am, would you mind telling me, I, I, you have documents in your hand. Would you mind yes. telling us for the record, what, what is the title of those documents you have in your hand? Okay, one is a letter from the attorney to the um, recorder of these, letting them know that they filed. Okay. Um, please find a deed to be filed. No, you don't have to read it. Just, just, oh, okay. I just want to know what it is. What's the next the, document? The one is a, um, I guess, the bill to pay. Okay. Was, they, they paid the bill, okay. I guess, to, to file. Okay. The Philadelphia Real Estate Transfer Tax Certification. Okay. That's the other one. Okay. And then this one is... Um, well, this is a whole thing that said state and start off with this deed made on this date between the estate. So it's a whole letter. Oh, that's the, that's, the, that's the deed itself, I think. Yeah. That's, and okay. it's notarized and I signed it and my brother signed. Okay. And what is the name of the attorney who wrote the letter? Um, Alfred J. Murley. And his address? It's uh, 261 O York Road, The Pavilion. Suite is it, 733. Is that Philadelphia? Um, no, he's in Jenkintown. And what is the date of the letter? Uh, this letter, oh, the letter that he sent, September the 23rd, 2021. Okay, thank you. It's okay. important to have all that on the record. Okay, now, okay. Ms. Ms. Rand, what do you have for us? Uh, yeah, I have a copy of the documents that she just described. I have them. Oh, okay. Okay, thank you very much. Now, sure. those documents, any of them notarized? Yes. Oh, sorry. The last page um, is notarized. No, I was asking Ms. Rand. I just wanted her to oh. confirm that. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's correct. The, uh, the deed is notarized. If okay. That was sent in in September, it now being December. Mm -hmm. 
Now that there, there could be an issue because of tangled title and the re records department may have rejected it, but it would seem that if it was sent in in September, by now there ought to be on what's called Philodox, P-H-I-L-A-D-O-X, some record of that deed being recorded and hopefully uh, Alexandra can confirm that. Um, Chairperson Pincus, uh, I'm sorry, board member Pincus, the last thing I'm able to pull up is an assignment of mortgage document dated December 15th, 2003, relating to this address, 3235 North Marston Street. Okay. What I will ask <laughs> then, if, if our legal counsel could send me something in screen chat, give me the up or down thumb on this. If there's a legitimate legal way to work around, I'd like to do that so we can get this resolved. Okay, thank you. Based on advice from counsel, I think we can proceed. Okay, thank you very much. Let's, so let's prepare, let's, let's proceed then, okay? Uh, we're gonna hit a case today. Okay, if I could just request that the documents um, Ms. Turner has indicating she's the rightful property owner if they can be provided to me as well, just for our own clarification and to confirm ownership. Yes. Yeah, I asked Ms. Rand by, uh, to, uh, in fact, do that. Thank you. And so, um, board of members, this is an appeal that was filed by Ms. Turner back in October 2020. Uh, relating to a notice of defect that was received for a Philadelphia Water Department lateral notice for 3235 North Marston Street. Um, as discussed, this was last before you back in August relating to the title issue. And just by way of history on the matter, on July 25th, 2019, the streets department received the call regarding a depression in the street of the 3200 block North Marston. On August 5th, the Philadelphia Water Department went out. They drilled boreholes in the depression in the depression in the street and performed the dye test. And it was subsequently referred to the CCTV unit. In October 2019, the CCTV unit found a collapsed storm lateral as part of the investigation. And October 2019, the CCTV unit performed a confirmation uh, dye test indicating that the collapsed lateral belonged to 3235 North Marston Street. And in July 2020, the CCTV uh, unit served the notice of defect on the property. And there were reinspections done at the property six, six different occasions. The most recent was done this morning and no repairs have been made. So the city currently has um, Mr. Francis Francesco as its witness for today's matter, Mr. Francesco? Yes. Okay. Okay, Mr. Francesco, do you have video? We have uh, a video of that. Uh, no, no, you're misunderstanding me. We need yes. to see your face. Uh, I don't have a camera, no. I just have an image, I don't have a camera. You, you have an image of the screen of the Zoom call. Uh, I have, yeah, I have an image on on the Zoom of of my face, but I don't have a camera. I don't have a live video feed on my computer. Okay, you're using the city equipment. Yes. Okay. Uh, and you, you're certain that there's no uh, option there to start the video. No, there's no option here. Okay, Alexander, can you confirm that? In fact, uh, we would prefer all witnesses and individuals to uh, allow to be on camera so we know, in fact, who we speak in. I, I can reach out. Um, Frank, are you on your phone or the laptop? I'm on, the, uh, I'm on my PC. Okay, is it's your own personal PC at home? No, it's a city. It's a city PC. Okay, and there should be. Is it a like a desktop computer or a laptop? Yeah, that's desktop. A desktop. So yeah, so there's no camera. camera. Um, okay. 
um, uh, uh, Alexander, can you confirm uh, that Mr. Francesco is who he says he is? Yes, uh, Chairperson Woodson, I can confirm. Okay, for this time, time only, in the future, please make sure that individuals have access to a camera. I will do so. Okay, Mr. Francesco, I need to swear you in. Raise your right hand, please. Go ahead. Uh, did you swear or affirm the testimony you give today be the truth to help you guys? I do. Okay, thank you. Please proceed. Thank you. Uh, could you state your uh, full name for the record, Mr. Francesco? Francis J. Francesco Jr. Okay. And how long have you worked for the Philadelphia Water Department? It'll be 26 years in February. Okay. And what is your current job title? Electronic Equipment Supervisor. Okay. And how long have you been an electronic uh, equipment supervisor? Since the year 2009. So that would be uh, 12 years. And what was your position with the Philadelphia Water Department prior to that? An electronic uh, technician group leader. And how long were you in that position? For uh, seven years, since uh, 2003. Okay. Um, in any of your capacities and your duties, um, had you ever had occasion to issue notices of defect? Yes. Okay. And what is the procedure uh, for issuing a notice of a defect? After we've determined from looking at the videos that a lateral uh, has a defect uh, based on either what we see in a video or in a cavity dye test, uh, a notice of defect is issued to the property in violation. And for this particular case, are you familiar with the address of 3235 yes. North Marston Street? Yes. Okay. And what was the defect uh, notice issued for in this particular matter? It was uh, issued for a defective lateral. Okay. I'm going to just pull up. Bear with me. Okay, I'm gonna, do you see what I have on my screen, Mr. Francesco? Yes. Okay, so this has been previously marked um, and provided as City Exhibit 1. And can you explain to the board and tell the board what we're looking at here? What we're looking at is a copy of the notice that was issued to the homeowner at that property. Okay, and the service address on that property is 3235 North Marston Street? Yes. Okay. And there seems to be something checked off on the front page. Um, yes, you just lateral. Okay. And what, what else does this initial front page um, inform the property owner of? Okay. It informs the property owner uh, that the die, the die was placed in a curbside vent to indicate that the, the lateral belonged to them. So there was a curbside vent in front of that property and that the die showed in the lateral that we have on TV in the video. Uh, now, in this particular situation, from what I'm reading here, uh, this wasn't this particular defect did not involve a cavity die test as much as it, it was. The, the sewer video shows the lateral to this property is collapsed. So there's a picture showing that the lateral is collapsed going to this property. Okay, and I will show you those pictures um, momentarily and we will go through those, Mr. Francesco, uh, but let's just stick on this um, defect notice for the time being. Um, you had referenced um, a, like the die shown in lateral and comments. Um, so I'm showing you page two of eight of the city's exhibit one. Do you see that? Uh, you're back on the first page again. That's that's the- Oh, uh, this is page two. That's page two, okay. Yes. And it indicates here that checked off die was placed in a curbside vent. Did I read that correctly? Correct. And that die appeared in the lateral, correct? In the lateral, yes. And the date of this notice was July Seven, 18th. Go ahead. Oh, Seven, no, you go 18, ahead. 20. Okay. July 18, 2020. Okay, and then I'm going to page 
three of this packet. Um, can you tell us what this, this document indicates? Okay, let me just explain it in the context. In reference, the, the first page was the typewritten copy that's printed by customer service, okay? The second page that you showed me was my handwritten copy that I put in the customer's door, okay? That's the difference between the, the, the two of them. The third one is the final notice that comes from customer service. Uh, I'm assuming it's for non-compliance because they didn't get it fixed yet. Uh, that, that's what that page is. So that's a final notice, a follow-up. Okay. And the fourth page, and this appears to be a bit out of order. Um, can you tell us what this is? This looks to me like a notice, uh, a re-inspection. Uh, again, it, it comes from customer service and it's a follow-up for um, when a notice is served, they follow up to see if any repairs were made. And the date of this notice? Um, 8 17, 2020, yes. Okay. And this notice indicates no repairs were made to the defective lateral at 35? That's, that is correct. Okay. And could you tell me the date of this notice and what this notice indicates? Okay, October 8th, 2020. Uh, looks like another follow up further down the line and still no repairs made. Okay. January 6th. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, I December, jumped. December 8th, 2020. Uh, same thing from, from a customer service, another follow-up, still no repairs made. And page seven of eight. January 6, 2021, another follow-up, still no repairs made. And the last page of this packet. February 5th, 2021, uh, still no repairs made. Okay, and who's responsible to uh, maintain the laterals? The homeowner is responsible for the laterals. Okay, and is that why the notice is issued to the respective homeowner? That is correct. Okay. Can I ask a question, please? Yes. Um, all these notices that you're showing, were they provided to uh, excuse me. Address or is that for the Excuse it. I'm Man, sorry. I was I was muted. What we will do once the she finishes questioning oh. the inspector, you will have a chance to ask questions. Okay. Okay. My apologies. Okay. Please proceed. Alexandra. Yes. You need further questions. Yes, I okay. will try to. Um, Mr. Francesco, this typed up page one of eight. Um, is this something that's mailed to the property owner? Yes, that's mailed directly to the homeowner wherever no. the homeowner primarily resides. No. Ma'am, please don't make any comments while we're hearing testimony, okay? I'm sorry. Please and proceed. Two of eight, Mr. Francesca, I believe you indicated these are your handwritten words on this document. That is correct. And was a copy of this provided to the homeowner? That is is the original. So that's the that's the notice that was placed in the homeowner's door. Okay. And then page three of eight, this final notice of defect, um, is this something that gets sent to the property owner? Yes, from the customer service, that's sent to the property owner. Now, I, I'm, I'm, I don't know if it's th through the mail or uh, I'm guessing it's through the mail, uh, but yeah, that comes from customer service to the property owner. Okay. And this document um, has the address of 3235 North Marston Street. Did I read that correctly? That is correct. Okay. And then the other pages, pages four to eight, these are just, um, and you correct me if I'm wrong, are these just internal documents? Uh, I... Yeah, I'm guessing that they're all internal documents. Yes, from, okay. coming from uh, customer uh, field service. Okay. So upon your information and belief, pages four, four through eight, those reinspections, those are just kept in the course and scope of Philadelphia Water Department records, correct? Yes. Okay. These documents would not be something that would be provided to the property owner. 
Right. As far as I know, yeah, these are all internal. Okay. You have okay. reference. I'm sorry. Any further questions of uh, Mr. Francesco? If not, I'll, I'd like to have the appellate have an opportunity to question him on his testimony. Yes, I have a few more questions, uh, Chairperson Woodson. Okay. Okay. Um, Mr. Francesco, you referenced the collapsed lateral in some photographs. Do you recall that? Yes. Okay. So this is um, had been marked as City Exhibit 2. Can you explain to the board what we're looking at here? Yes. In the top picture, we're looking at the lateral and seeing that it is collapsed. Okay. And what is the bottom photograph? The bottom photograph. Excuse me, Inspector. What I see in that picture is an open pipe with a brick in it. Now, yeah. is that the picture that was taken from the sewer line under the street and you're looking into the lateral that runs from the house? Is that what this is a picture of? That is correct. So the only basis for the making a determination it's collapsed is because there is a brick visible in the lateral. No, it's not the brick that's that's given me that determination. It's the lateral behind it. It's it's all dirt. There's no uh, the the lateral looks like it's gone uh, practically. Okay. I understand it's not a dark hole that you would otherwise be able to look up. I get it. Thank you. Okay. And Mr. Mr. Francesco, yes. what is the bottom photograph? The bottom, the bottom picture is showing the blue dye that we put into the curbside vent in front of the house. Okay, and what is the significance of that dye? That dye just indicates that this is the lateral that's going to that house. Okay, and what, if anything, do these photographs um, show? They showed that the lateral coming from that house is collapsed. Okay. And let me stop sharing. And pardon me. Okay. And this has been previously um, provided as City Exhibit 4. Um, can you tell us what this is, um, Mr. Francesco? All right, this is an inspection report that we do uh, when we TV the sewer. Uh, just one thing, though. Uh, Alexander, would you mind increasing the size of that? It's sure. difficult to read. Sure, sure. Give me a second. Um, At the very top, there's some yes. pluses and minuses. Yeah. Is that better, Mr. That's Woodson, or more? Just a bit more. Okay. Yes, that's much better. That's better. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Mr. Francesco, um, this is an inspection report you indicated, correct? Yes. And is this a record that's normally prepared and kept in the course and scope of your position? Yes. Okay. And I'm going to direct you. This is page one of 38. I'm not going to go through all these pages, but I just want to direct your attention to the middle of the page on the left hand side of the page. It's 8.61. Do you see that, sir? Yes. And um, in the middle, it says number 3235. Is that number indicative of the property address? Yes. And this record relates to the North Marston Street, correct? Correct. Okay. And if you could just um, read to us what 8.61 indicates. Okay, miscellaneous fresh air inlet dye test, which is the curbside vent, visible at 10 o'clock. That's, that's the position where the laterals coming into the sewer. Blue dye property number 3235. And then the photographs I previously showed you, they were part of this report, correct? That is correct. Okay. I have no further questions. Okay, Ms. Turner, now do you have any questions to the inspector based on his testimony? I, I just wanted to know, is he the inspector, um, <clears throat> excuse me, when I was calling the water company, 
is he like the supervisor over? I'm just not quite sure what it is he did do. Okay. Ms. Francesca, can you answer that? Yep. I'm the supervisor over the technicians that do the inspection. Okay, because I called numerous times. I really don't know who you are. I never talked to you. Um, and you never called me back. That's that's one question. And oh, also no, the question I is wait, 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 wait. Just want to get the first question out. So your first question is, did he receive a call from you and why he didn't return your calls? That's the first question. He never he never called me back. So the ever. question is why he didn't return the call. Correct. Mr. Francesco, do you have any record of receiving a call from Ms. Turner? I, I, I have no record of receiving a call from her. Okay. And then um, my other question would be the paperwork that you showed um, about the lateral being uh, defective. One document you showed is filled out. I mean, really filled out that you showed here today. But the paperwork that I have is, is not filled out like that. That's one thing. Who wants the question thing, though? I, I guess I'm, I just want to make sure you ask me a question. Why do the paperwork look different? Your presentation for here today, your paperwork is really filled out. Normally you guys just come put a paper in the door that's telling me that the lateral needs to be prepared. So my that's documentation that I have is a little bit different than your documentation. And I really think it's unfair Wait, wait, just get, let's get him to respond. Ms. Turner, we have to we ask the question, then we need a response, okay? Mr. Francesco, is there any explanation for the difference in, in the uh, documentation? Well, only the one document that was shown on page two is the one that I put in the door. The other one came from customer service. So now I think she may be referencing the... the uh, she may be referencing the documentation that showed the lateral break and the uh, die test, et cetera. Do, we, do you give that to the customer? In this particular case, I believe that we did give pictures out because we were instructed to do that in this case. So I don't, I don't know if she's got that picture or not. Uh, okay. But I, could, I remember giving pictures out to the, um, with those notices. In that particular situation. Okay. Ms. And Turner, do you my, have any other questions? Yeah, just my last question. Um, I know they said they were out this morning. Do they have anything to show that they came out that many times? Like he's stating. Okay. I don't know like who date. was I like don't know date. who was out there this morning. Uh, it was a different, must have been a different unit. It could have been customer service that was out there this morning. I don't know. Okay. Who was out there well, morning. Alexander may be able to respond to that. Do you have record of the inspection dates? Yes. So the documents I provided, uh, Ms. Turner, they had all those respective dates. Um, those aren't something that get left out to the property every time they do a reinspection. The I just received email confirmation this morning that they went back out to the property this morning. Um, eventually, they will upload that into their system the same way I showed those other notices of reinspection. So, yeah, they, it will be documented. I don't have that okay. right now because it was just this morning, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Uh, Ms. Alexander, do you have any additional witnesses? No, no, uh, Mr. Woodson, I do not. Okay. Uh, Ms. Turner, would you then uh, get uh, just, just a city rest? Are you done? Yes, the city rests and would like to uh, mark and move. Um, into the record, the exhibit shown to Mr. Francesco. So move. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, Ms. Turner? One question. If yes. I Mr. Francesca, I think you stated, and I can't remember whether it was 32 pages, but there, I think there was some number of around 30 pages that you indicated had photographs of the sewer line. Is that is that correct? Yes. In these reports, it's like the first two or three pages is the actual report itself. And then the remaining pages are the pages of the pictures that were taken during the inspection. So those are in the city's files. They aren't necessarily provided to the proper at the property or to the property owner. Right, right. They don't they don't get the actual inspection report. The city, they're in the city files. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Turner, uh, 
you've heard the testimony. What is your sense of the, well, let me ask it a different way. Have you hired a plumber, anyone to take a look at your system to see if in fact uh, that there's a problem and what's required to repair it? Um, no, I have not. Okay. Uh, what's the status of your water at the property and your uh, wastewater system? Um, I don't understand what you mean. What, my water uh, is the one, if that's what you're asking. Okay. Is it flushing? The toilets are flushing? The water, dra yes. the pipes are draining? Okay. Yes. Any water backing up in the house? No. Okay. Any reason why you haven't gotten a plumber to take a look at the violation? Well, because I know that it needs to be fixed. It's, it's not that I don't know that it needs to be fixed. I know that. It's the fact of trying to get the loan to get it fixed. So it's not like I'm just sitting around doing nothing. I mean, I got the attorney. Paperwork was filed. I've been calling the water company. So th those are the things that I've been doing. And so is it your intention to uh, file for the uh, make an application to the water department's loan program once you get the title worked out for the property. Yes, because I call the water company all the time. Sometimes they check for okay. me to see about the deed. Okay, thank you. Any further questions from anyone? I have a chairperson. So. Okay. Oh, can I, I'm sorry, may I just, Miss Turner, are you the only person living at the property currently? Uh, no, it's me, my daughter, and my granddaughter. That's it. Okay. But your brother that will be on the deed, he will not be residing at the property? No, my brother haven't lived in that house in over 20, 30 years, so no. Okay. And are there any other siblings or anyone that could make um, like a title request for the property? As I believe you indicated, your father hasn't left the will, correct? Correct. My sister is, is um, deceased and I had an older brother. He's deceased. Okay. So it's just me and my younger brother. Okay, ma'am. Oh, so... If you have another sister and a brother, did they have children? I just a niece. That's it. My niece have her own house. She doesn't even live there. No, 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 no. But but I was asking the question. There is a niece from one of your deceased brothers or sister. Sister, correct? Yes, that's correct. And your father didn't leave a will, correct? No, he did not. Okay, so that may be among the issues as to why that deed uh, is not of record yet, that someone is checking and trying to confirm, maybe with the register of wills, who the legal owners are and who must sign the deed. Um, it sounds like you need to go back to your attorney and make sure that that attorney has successfully or done all that needs to be done in order to have that deed properly reported? Well, what was told to me from uh, when I called, well, this is just a water company, but um, not just that, is everybody is not fully back in the office. People are working from home. Um, that could be some of the delay as well. It that may not have be. anything to do with, you know, you're right. What you're saying, but I understand what you're saying. Um, but people are not fully like I only come to work two days out of the week, but I work from home. But sometimes you need to physically be in the office to do what you need to do. So that could be a reason as well. But Miss Turner, what Mr. Pinkers is raising though is a real issue for you and your uh, living brother. Okay. If there are children from the deceased brother or the deceased sister. They right. have certain legal rights. You need to speak with your attorney who prepared that will. Make sure he knows those individuals exist. Okay. He may not, you may not have shared that with him, may not have thought it was important, but okay. he needs to know that because okay. if they are there, he then needs to take certain action to make certain that they do not have any claim against the property. And it's just one niece. My brother didn't have any children, but I understand. Okay, because that one person has has every right as you and your living brother to uh, claim some interest in the property. Okay. All okay. right. But we aren't, we are not your attorneys. We're not allowed to offer you legal advice. We're just saying to you, there's an extra complication that I didn't hear when I asked earlier and, and you gave me a different answer when I asked you earlier. Okay. Uh, so it's not, nothing you can get around. It has to be resolved or else you'll be in this same sick circumstance for years to come. 
Now, okay. let's do what we need to do. Uh, is there anything else from anyone? Okay, if not, then we're going to, uh, this, this appears that Mr. Pink is based on your experience. We're looking at about 90 days, you think, to get this recorded? Well, um, I, I would think that the recording at the city is two to three months behind probably. So it, there ought to be some response from the records department coming to Ms. Turner or her attorney, if not within the next 30 days. So okay. then it can get resolved one way or another. Except that this other uh, issue may pop up. It could pop up unless he's already dealt with it. Perhaps. Okay. Okay. Knows. All right, then. Uh, I will just as regard and to appeal number HA-2021-00767. Uh, Stephanie Turner, 3235 North Marston Street, City Firm, 90 day stay of enforcement. City okay. of 90 day stay, I agree. City Firm, 90 day stay of enforcement. Uh, Ms. Uh, Turner and Alexander, what we've done is vote to uh, confirm the city's position, but to give you 90 days uh, without any additional enforcement action by the water department to get this okay. matter resolved, okay? And to okay. make the applications to the city, to get this title worked out. You got a lot of work to do. So if you haven't yet, call your attorney today. today and I ask will. Him to get working on it. All right, thank you. All right, thank you. Welcome, have a good afternoon. All right. Mr. Woodson, uh, that yeah. concludes the matters I have before the board. May I be excused? Yes, ma'am. Have a great day. Thank and you we also. will practice your name and get it correct the next time. So I apologize mm -hmm. on behalf of the board. It is fine. It happens all the time. Thank you. OK, what do we have next? OK, I'd like to go out of order and just go to number 13, because the um, attorney has a request for an interpreter, which we don't have present today because we weren't aware they needed one. Oh, OK. Who's the uh, who's rep would you read it into the record then? Absolutely. Case number 13. Appeal number HA-2021-002608, uh, Parmenio Almonte, 905 North 11th Street, represented by Joseph Vaccaro. Okay, and who's representing the city? Michelle Reinhardt for the city. Okay, Ms. Reinhardt, uh, Mr. Vaccaro, you, you, you're muted at the moment, Mr. Vaccaro. Yes, uh, although I'm muted on the computer, but I'm participating by phone. Perfect, and video. okay. So you could hear me at least. Okay. And so is it is it our, your understanding that you're requesting a continuance based on the lack of a interpreter? Correct. Okay. Ms. Reinhardt, were you aware of that? And what's the city's position? Uh, I just found out at the beginning of this hearing, um, but we are unopposed. Okay. Is this the first continuance request for this matter? Correct. Yeah. First listing. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, we'll continue with that. Uh, just appreciate it. Thank Mr. Vaccaro, as please advise your client to make sure the need for interpreter is known as early as possible so that we can do everything we can to have someone present. Much appreciated. Thank All you. Right. Thank you. We'll continue the matter. Thank you. Have Thank you, day. Chairman Woodson. Um, with that, that concludes my matters. May I please be excused? Uh, yes, ma'am. Have a good day. Thank you. You do the same. Okay. Okay. Our last case, case number 12. Appeal number HA-2021-00264, Diogenes De Jesus Nunez Morel, 700 South 55th Street. Okay, Ms. Clark, you representing the city? Good afternoon, members of the board. Nikia Clark on behalf of the city of Philadelphia. Okay, uh, is anyone present representing the appellant? Uh, Mr. Morrell, is anyone present representing Mr. Morrell or Mr. Morrell himself? Okay, Ms. Clark, have you had any communications with anyone regarding this matter? I have not. I reached out and sent the exhibit packet to the appellant, but I haven't heard anything back. Okay, so you didn't get a response. Was that packet sent directly to Mr. Morrell or someone else? Directly to Mr. Morrell. The Morrell okay. Gmail address. Uh, no, I don't. I don't need. That. I just uh, want to confirm, uh, Miss Ram. Would you confirm that uh, there was service for today? Uh, 
Uh, yes, there was service and it's dated uh, November 17th, 2021. And okay, thank you. First continuance granted in the case. This is the first, was it was a prior continuance? Yes, it was originally yes. called for November 16th. And then um, the, so we put it on December 14th. Okay. Okay, thank you. Well, that being the case, um, Ms. Clark, uh, what's your pleasure in terms of how should the board proceed? Hearing no response, uh, I would respectfully request that the board grant a city of firm. Okay, for the thank you. Of the appellant. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Pinkins, what time do we have? 2.48 p.m. 2.48 p.m.? 2.38. 2.38. Okay, okay, thank you very much. Um, with regard to HA 2021-002-62604, Two six zero four, Diogenes De Jesus Nunez Morel, seven hundred South Fifty Fifth Street, uh, City Affirm, lack of appearance. City Affirm, non appearance. City Affirm, non appearance. Okay, thank you very much. That resolves that matter. Thank you. And that concludes my business. May I be excused? Yes, ma'am. Have a good afternoon. Thank you. Okay. Uh, what else do we have for today, Ms. Rand? Um, that is the end of our case list for today. Okay, just before before you leave, though, what, what's the uh, number 11? Uh, was that continued, Mr. Pina? Uh, yes, that was continued. Okay, and 14 and 15. Mm -hmm. uh, 14 was withdrawn and 15 was moved. Okay, I have that. Right. You okay. Thank you very much. And I'd like uh, everyone other than the board to remain, everyone else, Please have a good afternoon and please have the board remain for the executive session. Thank you so much. Uh, I don't believe we need the court reporter for executive session.